Hey there everyone and welcome to another Ultimate Fair episode review, but before I do start it, I want to say that I have my friend Scarlet is kind of entering a competition to get some really cool makeup and a £50 gift card from a channel called Emily Boo, so I'm going to put a, a link in the description to Scarlet's uh, channel, and I'm going to put, uh, to go subscribe to her, even though she doesn't really post anything, and I'm going to put a link in the description to the video, find the comment of the person named Scarlet made and give it a like, just do everything, because she really deserves it, and I really think she should win it, and she's awesome, and she does a shout out. So there you go. Anyway, uh, Tough Redemption, Season 25, Episode 6, Let Me Bang, which is a nice little reference to Season 16, which, as we know, was just the worst season. It was just the worst. And uh, it's a reference to Julian Lane, who fought in that season, and he fights in this episode. And he, you know, he was known for his temper tantrums, the most famous of all being Let Me Bang, Bro which is due to the fact that he wanted to fight again because he lost his prelim fight against Bristol Marunde. He hadn't really lost a fight up until that point, or I think he did, and he just didn't really have that the right mindset of dealing with losses very well. He was a lot younger, a lot a lot more foolish, and uh, yeah, didn't really deal with it. Uh, so yeah, you know, as always, we find out with the video packages. I keep forgetting to mention those, but yeah, nice video packages. You know, we find out about Ramsey and Jim's life with his girlfriend. Who is very pretty, by the way. And uh, Julian Lane and his life with his two daughters who are just adorable. And, uh, yeah. Uh, we can see Julian Lane is definitely much more calmed down. There was the stare down that they had at the weigh-ins. And, uh, like, Ram Ramsey started off sort of kindly. Then Julian put his forehead against Ramsey's. Uh, because that's a thing that happens when it comes to the UFC. Uh, with Wayne's. If you really want to get in someone's face, you literally put your head against theirs. It is, honestly, it's head-to-head. -head. Kind of a joke, kind of not, because it literally is that. Uh, yeah. Because of the energy of the particular weigh-in, uh, shit gets started between the coaches, but not Dillashaw and Cody, well, not immediately, at least. Uh, Justin Buckles, on Team Garbrandt, um, starts to call out Dwayne Ludwig, you know, basically calls Dwayne Ludwig a traitor and says that all Dwayne Ludwig does is teach kickboxing lessons and Dwayne sort of counters, you know, that he's the one who turned TJ into a champion. There was really, pardon me, there was a little nice back and forth, like, you know, Justin asked how many champions have you produced and Dwayne said, I've got TJ, and Justin pointed out, yeah, well, we've got Cody now. Now, I was sort of thinking, well, Cody didn't take the belt from TJ, TJ lost it to Cruz and then Cruz lost it to Garbrandt. It was still a really sort of nice sort of call back and forth between the two, but they did have to be separated. I feel like just Buckles, as much as I like him, he was a bit out of the line. But I did like that the assistant coaches got involved in it. You know, they sort of mixed it up because they actually hold a lot of uh, precedence over what happened between TJ and Team Health Mail, to be honest. You know, Dwayne wants to start his own thing, and everyone calls him a traitor, everyone calls TJ a traitor because he left to train with Dwayne. It's a lot of hassle that really shouldn't be there but it just is uh eventually you know cody and tj start talking back and forth and cody starts getting a lot more intense and actually tries to run around jumping onto the side of the cage and tries to run around and get closer to Dwayne and tj before all the other fighters pretty much step in and stop any more shit from happening and uh yeah tj even said in the backstage interview thing that like Cody just believes in emotion. He doesn't really deal with words well. Like, if something isn't going his way, he'll throw a temper tantrum. It sort of seems that way. But, uh, yeah. Then we get to the fight itself. Uh, Ramsey Nijim against Julia Lane. It is now 6 and 0 oh to Team Dillashaw. Ramsey Nijim beat Julia Lane by TKO in the closing moments of the first round. Uh,. It was actually probably my favourite fight of the season, mostly because Julian Lane was actually doing a lot more. He landed some really good jabs, some really good hooks. He did get a, a takedown or two. He got two really good guillotine jokes, and Ramsey was close to tapping, but he managed to power through. He managed to escape. And Julian Lane has a really fucking good guillotine. Like, even if he's not the greatest fighter, he does have a better mindset now, and he's got a mean guillotine. It's really good. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough to put Ramsey away, who eventually got the mount. Uh, landed a, a lot of punches, uh, even to the point of causing Lane to lose his mouthpiece, and then eventually the fight stopped. And after the fight was over, Cody sort of went on a rant about, you know, th thinking that the referee stopped the fight a bit too early, 
there was like 30, actually it was 17 seconds left in the first round if I remember. So I do kind of agree with that. And, uh, yeah. I do kind of agree with Cody. I think the fight could have been held off. But then again, the ground pound was going on for a solid 10, 15 seconds. I feel like the fight could have been stopped a little, tiny bit quicker, to be honest. But I do think it would have been nice to see how round one would have closed out. But Ramsey Nijim got the victory. Uh, in fact, if I remember correctly... Yeah. Okay. Right, I was just making sure I was right about that. So, in in order for Team Dillshaw and their win, it's been decision, finish, decision, finish, decision, finish. Really good wavelength, I quite like that. Uh... And obviously, you know, the next fight is going to be Joe Stevenson versus, uh, from Team Dillashaw against Justin Edwards from Team Garbrandt. And those two, that, that's going to be a good fight. I'm looking forward to it. But that will be sort of the last fight of the first seven because there is the wild card fight and they're going to judge that in the next episode. And I feel like one of them, for the wild cards, i got to think Julian Lane's going to be in there. I really think he did a good job and he was definitely winning the fight up until he lost it which is a weird sentence to say, but he did have a, a really good showing, all things considered. I think he could be a wild card. My other wild card pick, personally, is possibly Seth Bashinsky. I feel like he did a really good job, uh, especially considering that Gilbert Smith was actually getting pretty tired by the end of that fight. He did manage to get a win. I feel like those two are going to be... Th those are my personal wild card picks, Seth Bashinsky and Julian Lane. I feel like those two have to be able to go through. And uh, that's pretty much it. I also, uh, next episode is going to be called Dark Horse, apparently. Hard to think of the entire history of the show, they've never called it that. I think Dark Horse might be referring to Tristan Edwards, who is actually really underrated. And uh, yeah, as always, as always, as I said at this other video, click the link to the video below. Search for the comment of Scarlet Mead. Just scroll down because there used to be, uh, there actually used to be an easy way to search for comments, but YouTube got rid of that for some really dumb reason. I don't know why. So go search for that and go give the comment of Scarlet Mead a like. It'll really help a lot. I'm going to do all that I can. And uh, I'll see you all next time. Actually, it should be Monday. Yeah, Monday's the next uh, UFC. I'm just going to quickly look that up. Just give me a moment. Way too far down. Okay. Uh, Alexander Gustafsson versus Glover Teixeira. That's gonna be pretty interesting, actually. Teixeira's not right. Gustafsson's just really fucking good. So yeah, I'll see you all then. Remember, click the video, click the link to the video, go like the comment, and. Yeah, I'll see you all uh, next time, so just take care, and you're all awesome.